So in 2017, um, I did a section hike of the PCT. Um, I was anticipating doing the whole 500 um, section of Oregon, but um, due to um, an overuse energy or injury on my ankle, um, I only completed uh, 175 miles of it from um, Callahan's to um, Wendigo Pass. So, um, and I did that in one week, which was 175 miles. So, um, going to kind of just go through um, all the gear one by one, just kind of show you what I uh, took. I'm not going to get into really any like specs and stuff like that about any of the gear. Just kind of tell you what it is and very minimal information on it because each one of these items I'm going to do basically a video on them explaining specs and full detail on all the items. So let's start off right here. We got my pack that I took and this is a ULA circuit. Um, very nice backpack. Um, purchased it just for that hike. Um, now it's pretty much my go-to go-to bag. It can be pressed down, you know, it's a 60 liter, it can be pressed down to like a 30 or 35. So that's what carried everything in. Um, as far as foot gear, I used um, the Ultra Lone Peak 3.0s. These are the exact ones that I wore. Um, they are kind of starting to get worn out on the toe. Um, I did wear these for a couple months prior to the hike just to kind of break them in and stuff like that. But it seems like on the Ultras, the toe piece kind of starts lifting. Um, I think it's just kind of a flaw in the shoe. I also have the Ultra um, Gators that hook on here because these are Gator compatible. And I just have the Ultra ones to put on there as well. And it worked, worked great. They're very comfortable. Um, so as far as clothing, um, I wore one set and then I also carried kind of a second set just for layering or sleeping at night. So um, basically I had just like a Russell. Um, this is a long sleeve. I had a long sleeve one and it's vented on the back. And then I also had a short sleeve one that's fully vented on the back as well. Um, just to kind of try not to sweat when I'm on the trail because it was quite hot. It was in the middle of the summer. So, and then as far as bottoms, I just wore a pair of Russell, you know, lightweight jogging shorts and then if I needed to layer up I would just pair put on a pair of um, leggings so old leggings here put those on to kind of layer up if I was getting cold say in the morning or at night um, I also did bring a light pair lightweight pair of gloves um, just in case you know my hands got cold like in the mornings or at night at the end of the day as far as socks um, I wore a lightweight pair during the day um, and then at night kind of when I was in gonna go sleeping I kind of put these on these were kind of like my nighttime socks just a nice pair of REIs so and those worked out quite well um, headgear I actually brought three pieces of headgear I bought brought this Columbia kind of like sun hat which worked out quite well kind of protect my face um, a lot during the sun sunny days um, I always bring a buff I like wearing buffs so um, I brought this little buff guy here Got quite a few of those, but that's the one I brought on this trip. And then as far as warm headgear, I just brought this Crag Hoppers, just kind of a beanie. It's a tight fitting kind of um, almost like a, a windstopper material and then it's kind of fleecy in the inside. So that's just kind of my go-to cold hat. I love it. Um, uh, I also wore um, uh, Sierra Designs uh, down sweater. Um, 800 fill this little guy here so and it you know that was just kind of like my under under layer for you know when it kind of got cold so very awesome piece of gear not too expensive I they still sell these um, I actually got mine on a clearance for like 80 bucks and I've seen them like now they're selling for like 150 which I don't get that but whatever I'm a bargain shopper so as far as um, sleep systems gonna start out with this um, oops, hold on a second. I forgot a couple items here. Um, I, my rain gear. So for rain gear, I wore a Marmot Precip, this guy right here. And I also use that kind of as a, a wind, wind jacket too. Um, if it's kind of windy out, I could just throw this on just to kind of break the wind. And then also just a pair of uh, rain pants. Um, although I never even wore these, it didn't rain at all. So I did use them once when it got really, there's lots of mosquitoes 
around the lakes. I did throw those on because my mosquito repellent was not doing anything. They were still attacking me, so I ended up throwing all my gear on just to try to keep the mosquitoes from biting me, which was kind of sucky because I got really hot and sweaty. Okay, so now we're done with clothes. Let's get back on to the sleeping gear. So my pad was um, Static V. Um, it's a great little pad, um, lightweight, not very expensive. I think these run like 50 bucks. So um, I didn't poke a hole in it or anything. It was, you know, for summer, spring, maybe early fall use. I'd say this is something you could definitely use, but you know, winter, or you know when it's colder probably not this because it's not very insulated but for summer and spring awesome um, <clears throat> as far as my sleeping pad I bought an outdoor vitals um, summit 30 degree so at the time when I bought this they were kind of only about a year old company and I was able to get this from them at a starter price um, now they're quite a bit more expensive. This one I was able to purchase, they gave me like a 15% discount to buy it off and I ended up, I think I paid like 85 bucks for this. 800 fill down, 30 degree sleeping bag and now I think they're going for like 130 to 150 bucks. So that was quite a savings. Um, I brought this but I'm probably gonna upgrade this. I wanna get um, one of those kind of fold out um, sit pads but this is the one I was using. It's, it's just a cheap Walmart equip um, sit pad and you can just kind of blow it up. It's kind of self-inflating. So it works great, but it's it's a little heavier than I wanted. So my um, shelter was a Six Moon Designs Lunar Solo LE. Um, I also put inside of here, there's a cheap Sil Nylon 5x7 um, tarp from Walmart that I use as the, the ground sheet. It's pretty lightweight and then um, you know, I bought some really lightweight um, stakes because this is a, not a freestanding tent. This is, um, you have to stake it out. So, and you use your trekking pole for the center. One trekking pole and then stake out. Super awesome tent. Um, not super expensive. Um, it just it weighs, without the uh, stakes and the uh, ground sheet, it weighs just under two pounds. With the uh, stakes and the ground sheet, probably just a little over two pounds, maybe two pounds, five ounces at the most. So great little tent, I loved it. Um, so moving on, I'm not gonna go through all of this because there's just way too much to go through. So this was my first day, kind of Fossible's pouch. Um, has just everything you need to um, treat wounds, your feet, suntan lotion, bug spray, just, um, ibuprofen, just everything. This guy right here, it's, it's kind of on the heavy side, um, but I just like to be prepared. I like to be prepared out there as far as when it comes to toiletries and first aid and all that stuff, because you never know what's gonna happen on the trail. So that was that. Um, next thing was my cook kit. So I took one of these little small propane deals, and I'm gonna open this one up, because there's some stuff in here, some more gear in here. Um, I used the, the Tokes 550 mil pot, which was, you know, more than enough room for me um, and what I needed it for, just kind of more or less heating up water for hot meals and coffee and stuff like that. So in here I did put a lighter. Um, this little guy right here, it's just a, I believe it's this is called a, a BRS stove. It's just kind of a cheap little... Uh, china stove and it, it works amazing though it's really good this is like i paid eight bucks for that um and then i bought a tokes titanium spork this little guy right here kind of folds over and then you know does what a spork does um i also brought like the hot lips with it you know just to put on top just in case i was drinking wanted to drink coffee and the pot was still hot so it's kind of a little thing that fits on the edge from tokes so that was pretty much the contents of my cook kit. Tried to keep everything kind of basic and minimal as I could. It all just kind of fits back in here kind of nice and neat. So, and then, um, let's see, let's, what's next here? I think next we're gonna go to water and water filtration. 
So as far as my water filtration, I did use a Sawyer Mini. And kind of what I would do is I would, if I was in an area that I knew there wasn't going to be a lot of water in between, there's going to be a high mileage, I would fill all my water containers up and then I would keep this filled up too as well. So I could squirt it out and fill and just like either drink out of it or squirt it in containers, whatever I wanted to do. So as far as water carrying, um, this is pretty much what I carried. Um, two of these guys, which I believe, what are these, 750 mil, I believe. Yeah, these are 750, 750 mil. So I carried two of these up on my side pouches on my ULA circuit, and then one big smart water bottle on the side pocket, one liter. So these were pretty much my capacity, which I think is pretty close to probably just under three liters of water on a full carry. So which there was a couple times where it kind of got close. So when I was doing like, there was a couple areas where it was 20 miles between water supply, which was kind of a lot. So that was the only time that I really needed to, to completely fill up. Other than that, I'd keep just like, you know, these guys full and that'd be plenty. So that's what I use for water. So next, um, I for sunglasses, I just use these work. These are my work safety glasses. So they, they're kind of look like kind of a military sunglasses and they, they work great. I don't like sunglasses a lot unless I actually have to put them on just just for like if the sun's really beating down. I don't like stuff covering my eyes and my face. It's just it bothers me and annoys me. But if it is really bright, then I will throw those on. As far as um, a knife, I just kind of brought this little CRKT uh, neck knife. Just brought that with me. Nothing big, just to cut cheese or meat or whatever. Um, I brought this Foxelli headlamp. Um, did pretty well. I like this. I just kind of bought it and want to test out some of the Foxelli stuff. Um, this is rechargeable, so I could just hook it up and recharge it you know, on the go. So if it was running, running low, which it never did, I wasn't out there long enough for the batteries to run low, but it's kind of cool that they would be rechargeable. Um, so as far as electronics, um, I brought this solar charger. Um, it's kind of a no name battery bank solar charger and the solar charger part really didn't work that great. <laughs> so the bat, it did, as far as the battery bank part, awesome. Um, Probably in the future, I'll probably go with a RAV Power. Um, I think they're just better. This is just, was just cheap, and I was just trying it out. I wanted to see if it worked solar. Hung it on my pack the entire day, and I don't think it ever really charged much. Um, and it just it ran out like after four or five days, you know. And then you know, then I'm recharging it. So that's kind of how that went. And then, then I did. I brought my cell phone, of course, for um, GPS. Um, location um for the trail um i had the gut but app so i was able to see where that that was a lifesaver if it wasn't for that gps app i probably would have got lost because there was just so much snow in certain areas the trail was just like gone so when i was just fully on gps was pretty much the only way that i could find my way so and also i think there, i loaded some music on here and listened to some music and stuff like that on the trail and of course, do all my video and filming on the trail as well through my phone. So that was that. And then last thing was um, I got some Fox Ellie carbon fiber trekking poles. So, and these were great. These are awesome, lightweight, and held my shelter up great. Um, got the cork at the top, secondhand reach down here. Great little poles. And, you know, these weren't expensive. I think I spent like 60 bucks on them so i mean most usually carbon fiber poles you know you're talking like 150 bucks so anyways those were a great little bargain deal so that's pretty much about it that pretty much wraps it up um the total my total base weight um not counting like water because that's consumables um i think it was like 15.5 pounds it's kind of where i ran and then um I had about three pounds of water and seven pounds of food, or actually eight pounds of food. 
Um, I was running right around the 26 to 27 pounds on a full carry is kind of where I ran. Um, one thing that I did figure out um, talking with through hikers, something that I would do different in the future on large hikes is um, do more food drops, carrying less food at a time. Um, I was carrying like full seven days worth of food and most of the through hikers were carrying like five days. They're knocking two or three pounds off their pack um, by doing that. Um, it's a little bit more work. You know, I have to send out more packages, but you know, it's getting you lighter on the trail and you know, trying to be lightweight on the trail is a good thing because it's only gonna allow you to be more comfortable. So anyways, uh, that's all my stuff. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, um, just leave me a comment down below and thanks for watching.